Hello everybody, welcome to Bad Big Games. I'm your host, Joseph. You're about to watch the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. But before we do, I just want to give a little update. The podcast is up on all types of RSS feed services around the globe. So check it out. Please rate us five stars. It really does help us out. Um, but before we start the show, heads up. Uh, because we just built the PC and we're just trying to get acclimated to things, um, OBS decided that the video portion wasn't going to work out. It bugged out halfway through. So instead of just seeing our lovely faces this week, uh, we're just going to put gameplay over the audio so that at least you get the podcast out because this week is such an amazing episode. Our guest Nathan from the New Entertainment System podcast is so brilliant. He's so kind and I can't wait for you all to check this out. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, links to his podcast and ours down below. Let's start the show. No longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph. It is here on this very podcast each and every Thursday where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host who is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. And for our viewers who watch us over on YouTube, I'm in a new spot. I know, you got a new hey, computer. I did, and Ooh. so you can see more of my room, and it's a little chaotic right now. Yeah. Um, I so got it's all awesome. my post-movie and sports tickets up there. You on got the wall. Mets. Yeah, of course I got to represent the Mets. I love Come it. On now. I love it, yeah. but like, where's Jiminy going to stay? We don't know. Oh, but... Jiminy's permanently out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, we have a special guest with us, the two-headed giant himself, Nathan, from the New Entertainment System Podcast. How are yes. you, Nate? Good, good. How are you guys doing today? Man, I'm doing fantastic. No, oh, kidding. Lying. Good. But yeah, super happy to have you on the show. <laughs> uh, so, Nate, if you yes. could tell us Elevator Pitch, what yeah. do you do? What's your podcast? Why you hear all that jazz? So, I'm Nathan from the New Entertainment System Podcast. What we do is we have a, a, a robot, which is just a spreadsheet that I have uh, that is automated. Uh, it randomizes um, subjects, styles, and twists to come up with a random prompt to then design a video game um, with myself, Cam Konek, who is a previous guest on this program, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then um, a guest from either the games industry, the games journalism industry, or the games podcast scene. And um, so we then design fake games. So like, you know, we've done like an open world Marvel dating sim and we've mm -hmm. done, you know, there's <laughs> in an upcoming episode, there's a knack game made by id Software. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> um, That's amazing. <laughs> so it's really like you either get one of two things. You either get yeah. something that is, you know, just off the wall, crazy, ridiculous bananas that would never be a real game. Or it's something where you're like. I would want to play that a lot, though, <laughs> you know, and so that's the, that's the thing with your podcast. You always get to a point uh, where you're just like, this is I think this is not just playable, but like I want to play it right yeah. now. And yeah, then it, that's where you guys deviate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's especially with the episodes that are going to be coming out soon. Like we take a really big effort in being like, no, this can't be a bad game. We How can we make this a good game? And we push through that. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the market for new new games podcasts and you already listen to lots of, you know, fine podcasts of people that do like news programs and, and more topical stuff, such as this program, it's evergreen content. We've got about 30 episodes up right now. They're, they're real snackable and, and stuff like that. They're 30 yeah. minutes each. So I encourage you to check it out. Yeah, there you go. Please do. Again, please do, because it's fantastic. Like, it's like a last... Pringle. Once you listen to one, you just can't stop. You just, <laughs> yeah. just got to keep going. And hopefully we will get we will get both of you on the program oh, at, at oh, some point as well. So, I'd be yeah. honored. I would try to derail that show as much as humanly possible. Cam already does that. <laughs> so don't worry about it. That's true. I mean, you guys made a Red Dead game with Sunny D. So Yeah, we it's... the the most recent episode uh, at time of recording this uh, is a Red Dead game. That's a survival game. 
that uses a solar sensor like the Boktai <laughs> games. And so we came up with some kind of game where you need to like harness solar energy to basically become Ghost Rider. I don't know. I it, think I blacked out when I did that one. Honest <laughs> to God, yeah, and same here. And I, <laughs> Good box quote for that. <laughs> I can't believe in that episode you missed out. It's Red Dead, Sun Energy, and you missed the part where it's like, well, if it gets too hot out, maybe like the horse's balls droop even more. Like you missed out on the ball, the literal ball. I think we, I think we game. edited out a, a bit about horse balls. <laughs> okay, I was like, good. I was like, we can't. This can't go in. This needs to not be in there. Well, you know what? It's in this show. So with that, yes, go listen to the show. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about because we got a lot of news. So, yeah. surprisingly, we're going to talk about Last of Us Part 2. We're going to talk about every single game you ever wanted to play in 2020 being delayed. We're going to talk about possible Horizon Zero Dawn being multiplayer. But before we do that, a segment each and every week we begin the show with what you've been playing. I'm going to start with Nathan. What have you been playing, Nate? One game that I have been playing a little bit um, is available on PlayStation, which is the Castlevania uh, Collection, Ooh. which has like the first four castlevanias and some some little random extras i'm a big fan of the castlevania games but i'm not necessarily a high skilled gamer so it's nice to just kind of bop into that game play a little bit here and there get the vibe of a game and be like all right that's that's enough for me and castlevania is just one of those classic things that you you would think it would be around today in like a substantial form, but for some reason it's not. Oh yeah, yeah. Konami. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it literally just occurred to me that wasn't a bit. I literally, literally it would like. No, but, I was there with you. I was like, yeah, no, there isn't. Like you got Mega Man, like you know. <laughs> the the other game I've been playing a little bit is um, Ring Fit Adventure. Um, oh, okay. That All game right. is so well designed. It's yeah. fun to do, and doing like an RPG, but you're doing like little exercises and stuff like that that will make you sore afterwards but what i've heard about it is like you know if there was just a camera filming you it would look like you're just working out like you're not like doing like you know cheap half stuff it's like no man i was doing squats for like a half hour i saw no lie friend of the show sean capri he was streaming it and like he's just like i'm working my ass off i like you're he's sweating he's breathing heavy I if, would not if, be able to stream that game because, like, <laughs> after about a half hour of that, I'm done. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, man, that, that had to be a half an hour. And then it tells you the workout time is, like, only 12 Three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. You know, as a large and in charge individual, that is a game that I've actually been looking at as an option for some type of exercise. It's cool because, like, you know, there's, you know, you, as, as a fellow large and in charge dude, it's, it is – it is daunting to go to like a gym or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Uh, even even if you knew it was like your family that wouldn't judge you is there, then that's it. <laughs> um, or if you yeah. were the only person there, you would still like ch- like see yourself in the mirror and be like, nah, yeah. man. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're talking yeah. to somebody who has an outdoor pool by outside his house. Yeah. Still only family. Still go on with my shirt on. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Like, exactly. I still swim with the shirt on. So yeah. it's a it's a cool it's a cool um, alternative to to get exercise like in your living room in your game room whatever whatever um and you know there's there's also some things you can do with the switch off like you can do like this passive mode where you put the like ring on your arm and you do like little bicep curls with it Mm. and like like i said like if you like if you do it enough um and do it right you are sore and it's it's the main game of it is an rpg and then there's also mini games in there and it's just like it's made That's by crazy. nintendo well and so it's got that charm to it but i love it a lot let me tell you something give it give us three years sony's gonna rip it off you know we'll have something yeah really as good. So <laughs> yeah who knows yeah who knows? exactly kyle yeah what have you been playing sir uh i went back to a game that i didn't put all my time into last year uh i've been playing days gone and yes. i'm like really deep into it now uh mm-hmm. way past to when i stopped in 2019 and i'm digging it I'm digging yeah. it a lot. What's I, I the can... thing that's got your ho- the hooks in you? So I love how they do the storyline system, where you can see how much of a percentage of that certain storyline you have done. Ooh, okay, that was not t- in there at launch. Oh, it wasn't? I thought it was. No. I don't, um, no, I had no idea where I was in the story or where to go. Oh, okay. So the, <laughs> when things pop up, and you can, like, the side missions have their own storyline, and mm-hmm. the main path has its own. 
And if you're just kind of done with that particular part of the main story, you can just go off and do, like, clear some nest, infestation nest, or mm -hmm. take out a marauder camp. Um, so I'm digging that. It, when I feel like things are getting stale, I can kind of switch it up, which I like. I s totally understand why people had some hang-ups on it. Uh, yeah. A lot of the story stuff, um, besides the it content is, It wise, is very unapologetically Sons of Anarchy meets The Walking Dead. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's an acquired yeah. taste for sure. But Absolutely. If that's not your like aesthetic for storytelling and characters mm -hmm. and stuff... Mm -hmm. I can understand why anybody would bounce right off yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and yeah. A, lot a lot of leather of the... vests in that game. Yes. So many. So. And uh, a lot of the missions, though, I just don't understand why it wasn't part of a previous one. Like, you would finish, like, a big story mission, and the next one would be like, go travel one kilometer away yeah. and, and do this. And you show up, and it's for a 10-second cutscene. Yeah. That you get experience points for. I'm like, well, why isn't that just part of the ma other mission I just finished? For so the, I um, wonder if like Sony Ben was like, we gotta stretch the game out a little bit, put some yeah. more value. I don't know what it is, but for the story completion stuff, how does it break it down? Like, does it do like side story things like percentages, or is it like chapters in the game wise percentage? Oh yeah, uh, not chapters. Um, everything okay. is storyline percentage wise. So that's great. I, yeah, yeah, I believe the the first main like the first act. I don't know what act I'm on, um, mm -hmm. but uh, it it was like. I remember, and it's all about Sarah, your your wife. Uh, yep. Yep. And as you uncover more, the percentage goes up, and then once that's done, a brand new one pops up. And Boozer, cool. your buddy, has its own section. Yeah. And it's yep. still main story stuff, but it has its own storyline percentage you go by. That's um, really awesome. That's, yeah. that's it, a really clever solution to, like, sir, I, I'm not a big, like, st story in games guy okay. um and so like when i was playing horizon i was like talking to the king of this city and i was just like shut up how close yeah. am i to being done <laughs> if i go do this for you does it mean i'm done or and it turns yeah. out no like when i finished this one thing and then there was an ambush and i was just like yeah. man i just i wanted to go more explore more i don't yeah. want to be in this city <laughs> shooting people mm -hmm. i want to go to the dinosaur thing mm -hmm. man yeah. so, also stop hitting cool. on me king i'm I know. not interested <laughs> all right really yeah. not <laughs> and uh, the last thing about Days Gone before yes. we... Oh, yeah. the, the big selling point for Days Gone were these hordes of Freakers. Yeah. Yes. I am like, I don't know, 30 hours into it, and I'm still terrified of them. I have not tried to attempt to take any of them out, because oh, I still effective. don't feel powerful enough. <laughs> yeah. I will say, when it came to the Freakers about that game that made it so great, uh, when, it, when it comes to the combat, is that no matter how high level you are, they are always intimidating, and yeah. they are always just scary and challenging at the same time i've been playing kyle i know you're very excited about this uh, bloodborne again Among you already us. planned it no, 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 no. No, no, oh that's listen. right yes you played wolf among us i played time. wolf among us all right i oh yeah i can't just keep bragging about how i platinumed bloodborne <laughs> mad respect we're talking about castlevania earlier bloodborne yeah. you just play it with the whip that's castlevania man <laughs> <laughs> But no, I played Wolf Among Us, and uh, it was one of like it was snowing over the weekend. I was like, you know what? It's one of those chill days, mm -hmm. and I knocked it out in a day. It is a beautiful, cel shaded neon noir esque style game where it's like mid eighties New York, and somehow all the fairy tale characters that you grew up in Disney, like you know, with Disney, like the Little Mermaid and. Georgie Porgy is somehow a pimp. Like, it is weird. It is awesome. And somehow you're the big bad wolf mm -hmm. and you're a detective slash sheriff. And it is fantastic for one reason in particular. Because the story is great. I never saw any of the beats or twists happen. But to me, the greatest thing about Wolf Among Us is, um, is Bigby, the main character of the big yeah. bad wolf. Because... For me, not knowing Fable, that's the comic book series that it's uh, that's based off of, I I'm thinking of it as okay. All of a sudden, the bad guy from all these fairy tales is the protagonist, and he mm -hmm. has this responsibility. And it was one of those things in video games that it allowed me to truly experience what it's like to be a different character rather than just playing the scenario of what would I do in these certain situations. Um, and so for me, I was I was picking the story paths where it's Big B's trying to do the right thing, uh, but when pressured, he's going to turn into the big bad wolf. You know, he is going to the the reluctancy of like 
he's kind of like Wolverine, you know, in this or my Big B was of, oh, fuck, I got myself in this situation. Well, I got my claws out. That was, t- I think, Telltale at its best. So absolutely for for, a you know, for an adventure game like that, a uh, story driven adventure game, it was fantastic. And then also to mention, um, I got the back button attachment for the PlayStation uh, DualShock oh, 4 controller. I saw your video. You saw the video? Fantastic. Click it. But in short, it's actually fantastic. And I like it a lot. So I'm weird. But with that, (laughs) listen, gang, let's talk about the news because we got some. Before we do, let's talk about Patreon. Uh, Guys, gang, we just relaunched our Patreon just last week. We got whole new tiers and stuff. Uh, Please, please, please. You could be like our patrons, JB and Daniel Welsh that support us at the Silver Tier. If we ever made you laugh, if we ever got you through a work day or a hard day, please, a dollar a day helps us grow this big, beautiful family that we call home. So with that, Kyle, let's talk about the first goober on the list. This comes from Fraser Brown over at PC Gamer. What? PC news on a PlayStation show? I know, dude. This, <laughs> this week's going to be a little fucking crazy, so buckle in, kids. Uh, Fraser <laughs> writes, The Last of Us Part Two job listing asks asks for PC DX12 and NVIDIA experience. PlayStation developer Naughty Dog posted a job listing for a graphics programmer recently that has people wondering if Sony is giving up another exclusive. The role is attached to The Last of Us Part Two, which has only been announced on PS4, but the requirements and skills section list several things specific to PC. The new graphics programmer would join Naughty Dog's rendering team and needs to have a thorough understanding of current GPU architectures, including NVIDIA. Experience with DirectX 12 and Vulkan is also desired. Naughty Dog might be looking for candidates with broad experience, but it still seems odd to specifically list APIs and a GPU that you won't find in a PlayStation. PC programming experience is also listed alongside console experience, making it a bit more explicit. So that's where I ended the article there. And please give PC Gamer a click. This story is super fascinating because over the last few months, we've had, you know, Horizon being pretty much we know it's coming to PC. We have MLB the show becoming multi-platform next year. PlayStation is looking more multi-platform. Now, uh, us on the show, Kyle and I, we don't mind this. More people get to experience amazing games. Awesome. Nathan, what's your thought when it comes to PlayStation games moving to the PC? Yeah, I mean, you assume that this is, this is going to be released on Steam or Epic, right? Like, unless they do their mm-hmm. own launcher. Well, that's my, don't... yeah, that's my question here is, though, mm-hmm. is it going to be their own launcher? Like, do you I see could that? See, I could see that happening. I mean, you can do PlayStation Now on PC um, mm-hmm. now, so... Uh, That could definitely be a possibility. It's such, like, it's one of the really cool things about where we're at right now with console life cycles is, like, really anything can happen. Like, you could tell me, like, hey, in five years, you can play pretty much anything on anything. It's just it has this benefit on its home console, on its home turf, and it doesn't look as good on Xbox or whatever have you. Like, need I remind you, the original, like, code name for the Xbox is the direct Xbox and they're talking about direct X 12. So like, exactly, you know, so will we ever see a PlayStation game on an Xbox console? Maybe. Um, Cause they're basically all just PCs now. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so crazy to think about where all this stuff could go. And I think, you know, you could, you could hedge your bets and say that naughty dog is kind of future proofing it so that it can be on PC. Right. Um, but maybe this is like, you know, I don't know. Do you ever think that they're going to put like, and you know, Uncharted five is coming out for PS five and PC day and date. Like, do you think that's, that's ever going to happen? See, that's the crazy thing for PlayStation like, now subscribers or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there has to be something here when we're talking about the future of the PlayStation ecosystem, where it's, where is the future line? Because yeah. like, you're right. Like if I said, you know, I'll not, you know, or we used to say, I'll never see a PlayStation game on an Xbox or, or a PC because you're coming here for the console. That's who knows not, now? That, who <laughs> knows? We're having Xbox going, listen, we'll put fucking Cuphead, which is one of our best games on that, on that system. Cuphead's we'll in Smash, it man. <laughs> it's in yeah. Smash Brothers, exactly. Anything is a reality at this yeah. point. And so, like, to me, that that is a great question. Will we see it day and date? I don't know. I, Kyle, what do you think? Do you think it's going to be day and date? 
I don't. I think it'll probably be the window of like what Death Stranding is right now. Right. I yeah. think it'd be like either a year or so afterwards. Get yeah. that um, get that FOMO money. If you if you don't yeah. get it now, you're not you're gonna get spoiled probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. Um Yeah, and I, I think that Nathan brought up a good point. I, I think maybe it, Naughty Dog is putting these um requirements up there to kinda like future proof future projects. Just right. so that way they're covered all around no matter what comes up, like PS5 Pro, maybe PS6 is basically just like one of those Steam machines that Steam tried to do. Just put it in our mind. Right. Who yeah. fucking knows at this point? Yeah. <laughs> For me, I, I I do feel like PlayStation is going to have that fear of missing out syndrome of like, I don't see it com- coming day and date because they still want to incentivize the box at this yeah. point in time because you know, PlayStation now is not Game Pass mm-hmm. in terms of quality. It's just not there yet. Uh, there's so many things that we still are demanding from Sony, like all of the games being able to be downloaded is one of the biggest things we see on our Discord is like, yeah, I want to play my PS2 games, but I want them to be downloaded. That'd be fantastic. So there are things that still need to be done for PlayStation now to be viable so that PlayStation could do more crazier mm-hmm. things. But this is this is something that I think about a lot though. Um I used mm-hmm. to I used to work at a GameStop in same. in man- in management and stuff and Yeah. Same um, here, you said man. You, you said same. Yeah. So you know yeah. that um profitability on consoles is is not very high if at all and especially towards launch um they're being sold at a at a loss. So yeah. the real money is coming from these digital marketplaces, mm-hmm. right? Like um, Sony's taking like a third of whatever digital purchases you make. Um, like, you know, you buy, I don't know, you buy Titanfall two or something like that. A third of that money goes straight to Sony because it's their store. Yeah. And so if you think about it in terms of that kind of stuff, you can say like, well, if they just put a launcher, if PlayStation now or whatever they rebrand it to for this generation, cause I'm sure they will rebrand it to try oh, and get more people in. Yeah. Um, if that becomes their launcher for everything, sort of like an EA access kind of a deal, you know, that percentage money, wherever you're buying that game yeah. and they don't have to necessarily worry about putting this beefy, huge box that they're selling at a loss. They're losing mm-hmm. money getting this box to you because they hope that you're buying these games digitally. Yeah. That's why I can see it kind of going the other way where it's more yeah. open because it's like, I'll take your money wherever you want to give it to me, man. And, and, and that's Microsoft's philosophy, too. It's yes. just like, listen, dude, I don't give a fuck where you buy these games at this point. Just, like, please buy them. Mm-hmm. And, like, we'll put them on Steam. We'll put them on our own storefront. We'll put them on you know, wherever we... The Switch. Whatever. Yeah, we'll put them on a Switch. Just buy them because that mm-hmm. digital money is way more profitable because f- to... From my knowledge of how console sales work is it's by quarter PlayStation will give GameStop a bonus check of like, hey, you sold this many PlayStations. Here's some here's some flat out cash for for Mm -hmm. selling those PlayStations. They are taking a loss on that console. Now, Kyle, I want to come to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you think PlayStation would make their own own launcher? Do you think that's a mistake if they do that? Do you think they should go to somewhere? Because we see the hate for just the Epic Store's existence, right? The the vitriol that gets spewed. Do you think Sony Sony will take the hit PR-wise and just make their own launcher? I think I honestly think it would be a smart move for them. Um, yeah. Like, or it's just profit-wise. Like, why mm-hmm. share it with somebody else? Just take all of it if you buy it through their, their own launcher. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, like, to me, I'm thinking... Epic Game Store might be more up their alley because they take such a less lesser cut. Like I believe it's like ten 12%. or twelve percent, twelve percent. So like I could see them. I mean, we're seeing it right now with Ready Set Heroes, where you know Ready Set Heroes is on the Epic Game Store, and I know that you know Death Stranding isn't going to be published by Sony, but Sony does have a say uh, with that IP. It's going to the Epic Game Store, and we're also mm-hmm. seeing a lot of other games that. Sony has pr- partnered with uh, like all the Quantic Dream uh, garbage. <laughs> they, they, on the I'm, right the there, I'm right there with you. On <laughs> Dude, I know David Cage, we, man. This is not what this podcast is about. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Yeah, you're right. So Nathan, do you, yes. do you feel like it's it that they would rather take an Epic Games approach store handle the handle the PR disaster with with their own launcher? What do you think? It depends on 
how they want to go with it, right? They could do um, sort of like a battle net thing where it's like, here's our six games that you can buy. Or yeah. is it going to be um, sort of like Microsoft's approach of like, you buy it, buy it on the PS5, whatever, you can play it on the PC, knowing that there is a huge amount of people that will just subscribe to PlayStation Now or you know, buy on PlayStation now just so that they can play, you know, God of War two, yeah. uh, on it, like at launch on, you know, your HDR eight K, you know, 144 Hertz, yeah. um, screens, which like, you know, that's, that's pretty attractive for, um, for some, um, PC, um, enthusiasts and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, you know, this sort of coming back to the original, news thing of like naughty dogs hiring some people that want to know what a pc is basically yeah. like <laughs> that's 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 boiling it down super hard yeah. but maybe it's sort of like you know keep that as a possibility so that when it when we make the decision we don't have to start from scratch we can yeah. start from 70 percent right. get it ready we'll have and the and put it out so yeah. it's it could it's this is one of those news things where it's like you know if i want to be dismissive about it. I can be like, I don't know. It either means something or nothing. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but it's also like, if you, if you try to like open your mind a little bit more and you could, you could see like five years in the future, what does this exact news thing mean? Yeah. And it's like, again, it could be everything or nothing, but there are, there are so many different ways that this, this could lean being that, that it's first party. And Sony. that's so exciting too. It's, yeah. it's a new generation. It's a new way of thinking that we're seeing from, both Sony and Microsoft and Microsoft leading the charge into, you know, give credit where credit's due into this, this new, you know, front of like saying, listen, you know, PC gamers are PC gamers. We're never going to tear them away from their teraflops. Let's just bring them our games. Let's bring our games to them because they're never going to come yeah. to us. It's like, do you want to sell the game or do you want to not yeah. sell the game? Because that's what the choice is for a yeah. lot of people with police, with PC. And I know when it comes to like a, a lot of PC players, like they don't give a shit what's happening in console land. They really don't. And so just giving them the, the opportunity of, of having a taste of the ecosystem is is fantastic. There's I know a lot of a lot of PlayStation uh, or sorry, a lot of PC players who are just like, yeah, if Last of Us came on the you know the Steam front, I'd, I'd buy it, and that's fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. you're getting those people. You're not really losing any any sales in the in the long term. I'm sorry, Nathan, I cut you off. No, it's I was just thinking like, you know, with PC, there's there's no used games, yeah. so anybody that wants the game. And we'll buy the game. That is a sale for you. It's not this guy's going to buy it, sell it back to GameStop. They're going to play it, sell it back to GameStop. They're yep. going to sell it back to GameStop. How many people have played the game that you're like, if you buy it pre-owned, how, how many people have actually bought this and how many it's good for the consumer. But if you're if if I'm if I'm John Sony, owner yeah. of Sony, <laughs> it's not good for me. It's not it's good, not for, good my for me line. because that's, you know, I, I can see, you know, five or six people that could have bought this game for for 60 bucks new or and, if we put out a sale for 40 or or you know come out for um whatever the greatest hits is going to be called on yeah. on ps5 like you know I, I want those sales kyle any last thoughts before we move on to the next news story sir no i i just when nathan said like when you think about the news today what would it be like in five years and then yeah. i was like i wonder what the news was like when the sony first announced they bought gaikai the streaming service, like back when they were announcing the PS4 stuff. I, I don't I mean, remember I specifically, but I think yeah. it's sort of the same kind of conversations right? we're yeah. having today of like, yeah. wow, what would it be like if they really did it? And we're still waiting. And we're still getting, we're, we're just now getting to a point where PS Now is an attractive thing for PlayStation owners. We're getting there. We're getting it's not there, there yet. It, it was yeah. baby steps, but we're getting there. Baby steps. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And Kyle, um, this is a new segment called Every Game You Want is Delayed Now. Yeah. Now, with that said, Kyle, last episode, you fucking hit this first delay yeah, out of the park. Because I, <laughs> I panicked a little bit, and you're like, this game's delayed. Yeah. Tell everybody. Tell everybody you're right. Uh, I was right, and the game we're talking about, obviously, is Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, here is the official press release from CD Projekt Red. 
We have important news regarding Cyberpunk 2077's release date we'd like to share with you today. Cyberpunk 2077 won't make the April release window, and we're moving the launch date to September 17th, 2020. We are currently at a stage where the game is complete and playable, but there's still work to be done. Night City is massive, full of stories, content, and places to visit, but due to the sheer scale and complexity of it all, we need more time to finish playtesting, fixing, and polish polishing. We want Cyberpunk 2077 to be our crowning achievement for this generation, and postponing launch will give us the precious months we need to make the game perfect. Expect more regular updates on progress as we get closer to the new release date. We're really looking forward to seeing you in Night City. Thank you for your ongoing support. So, quick quick here real fast no one's really sad by this news because of the simple fact that we finally get a, a reprieve with you know resident evil and final fantasy coming out weeks you know uh, uh in between each other so doom. or next to each other and doom so we're all kind of happy and breathing a sigh of relief question here i'm gonna go to you kyle yeah um do you see because september uh 17th that's very close to the launch of the next gen. Mm -hmm. Do you see them just like, have they been bullshitting us? Let's cut to the chase here. <laughs> have they been bullshitting <laughs> us with, Oh, we're not working on anything next gen. Do you think that cyberpunk 2077 isn't just a cross gen game, but when we are playing it on our PlayStation five, it's going to have those improvements. I, I do th believe that is the case. Yeah. I yeah. do think that this entire time, because Honestly, looking at Cyberpunk, I don't understand how that could run on a PS4 at this point. It how won't. Dense it is. <laughs> and exactly. rumor rumor has it is like that's why they delayed it. Is and because, on Xbox too, right? Because it's just yeah, not running. Yeah, I mean, especially on the VCR Xbox, that thing is gonna <laughs> chug. You know, so fucking control doesn't work on PS4. Like <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> That takes place in one damn building. You're going to yeah. tell me that Night City is going to run Absolutely. on my PS4 and not make it fucking take off? No. Dude, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing is going to be like, it's going to be like a Top Gun 3 when you're playing that game with your yeah. PS4. I mean, my PS4 Pro currently only makes the jet noises funny enough while I'm playing Days Gone. I'm in the menus. That's the only time. Really? Where it, it sounds like it's taken off, but Some like high yeah. quality those fonts. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it's the ability to use the touchpad to swipe between menu screens. That's what uh, it does. But like, okay. yeah, Night City. I don't. They need to take all the time they need. Um, yeah. Obviously, we've uh, we've heard since this point, like that just means more crunch for the developers, which sucks. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I I just want them to take their time. I I, I yeah. don't want them to rush through it if. To me, honestly, just post your back to the release date of both console, new consoles. Ha ha I have mean, it be a PS4, but when you put it into your PS5 or your Xbox Series yeah. X, it can just have the updates for the next gen stuff. And and that's such like it's an easy thing for us yeah. to say, and mm -hmm. it's it's such a complicated issue because then it's just like, well, how do we pay for this fucking thing? You know, yeah, right. like Absolutely. that like that's the thing that really sucks is that it it is kind of like this like two-way street of like yeah i would love this game to get delayed and have people live their fucking lives and on the other hand is what do those delays mean financially for the company as a whole well and you know that this this game is not getting delayed because cd project red wants more time with their families it's getting delayed yeah. because they think it will be be bad for them financially mm -hmm. if it yeah. comes mm -hmm. out in the state that it's in yeah. as 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 ready to go as they say that it actually is like this this game is getting delayed because more crunch needs to happen um mm. from their perspective anyway yeah. it's that that horrible part that like you kind of want to turn a blind eye to because mm -hmm. it's like if you really think about it as you're playing it especially if you like know people that work on games and how much time goes into it you're like ah this makes yeah. me feel bad, but wait, if I don't buy it, does that mean that they didn't, yeah. you know what I mean? That it, it was, was all nothing. in vain. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like when you and, stare at your iPhone long enough, you're just like, oh my God, I can't, I can't fucking, even. Yeah. I'm yeah. like children in Africa mine for this <laughs> fucking gold. Oh, exactly. Jesus Christ. But like, yeah. you, you know, CD project red is not in the red as far as money goes. Like they, that is true. Witcher three is getting it's like biggest bump in sales um since, since it came out yeah um so you know that they could just say like you know what fuck it it's gonna come out 
in a year. We're going to make yeah. it yeah. the best goddamn game you're ever going to play, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to be relaxed while we're playing it. Everybody yeah. is in hammocks typing and programming this game. Exactly. Don't even worry about it. I mean, part but of me you, still believes, like, it's not going to hit September. Part of me thinks that maybe it will be a 2021 game at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can I can absolutely see that happening. Like, I, I wouldn't... Um, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't hold it past them. I feel like right now, any game that is, like... They're they're crunching super hard. They're like, Ooh, are we gonna meet our release date? They're like, this is the time right now to announce our delay. Everybody else is doing it. Nobody will be mad at us. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about the next game that's delayed right, right. now. <laughs> Kyle, take it away. Sir. Iron Man VR delayed to May fifteenth, twenty twenty. Camouflage's press release states the following: In order to deliver on our vision and meet the high expectations of our amazing community, we've made the difficult decision to move Marvel's Iron Man VR to a May fifteenth, twenty twenty release. We truly appreciate your patience and understanding. You'll be hearing from us again soon. Cool. Take all the time you need. Yeah. That's. I read that and I was just like not bummed out whatsoever. And that Fine. game was the Go closest to being released too. That was yeah. like a month away. Yeah. Um, but. I played uh, it. Hey, listen. It was it was cool, but I okay. could see they needed some more time in the oven. It, yeah, it was one of those games where you're like, haven't uh, haven't seen anything from mm-hmm. Iron Man VR in a minute, and they're yeah. coming out real soon. I bet they're probably having problems. Um, it and turns I, out they were. Yeah, and and I bet that we're gonna have a nice little state of play right before that game comes out because no doubt they want this thing to push VR units. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, that's fine. Let's go into the next one, which is the most troubling one I've, I think I've ever heard. I don't even know. Kyle, take it away, sir. Uh, Dying Light Two delayed till who the fuck knows. Techlands press release me. press release states the following: To our yes. dedicated community, it was a busy year for us as we continued working on our biggest project to date. We know you are awaiting the game eagerly, and we want to deliver exactly what we promised. We were initially aiming for a spring 2020 release with Dying Light 2, but unfortunately we need more development time to fulfill our vision. We will have more details to share in the coming months, and we'll get back to you as soon as we have more information. We apologize for this unwelcome news. Our priority is to deliver an experience that lives up to our own high standards and to the expectations of you, our fans. Please stay tuned and thank you to our fans around the world for your continued support, patience, and understanding. Holy shit. And I've kind of like I, I as as you were reading this, I kinda of heard like just just like the, the twenty one gun salute as they're lowering the c- casket here. This is fucking wild. Well it was E three twenty eighteen they showed it off first, right? The first yeah. Yeah. announcement. Yeah. It's been a it's minute wild. and They've kept on showing us trailers, but like Nathan, it's like what you said earlier. It's like, hey, remember, like Dying Light's supposed to be coming out, huh? When are we gonna hear, hear anything? Yeah, yeah. And, it's like that friend that you invited to the party, and the party's about to start, and you haven't heard anything from them, and you're like, they fell asleep. Didn't yeah. They? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is this is one where I'm like, they're just pushing this to next gen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this is this wasn't gonna get gonna be ready, and they wanted to get that that first adopter money i think with with the new systems but maybe what is the other one dead island this is another zombie yeah, yeah. sequel that is like probably maybe never gonna happen but we probably the crazy we're thing on it. dude the crazy yeah. thing is the, i mean Techland. this is the spiritual successor of dead island and it's just like holy shit yeah. <laughs> there's there's trouble here kyle do you do you have a sense that there's blood in the water when it comes to this game like it's in trouble or do you do you have a feeling like Nathan's Nathan's on the money here, where they're waiting for that next gen fuck you money, and they're gonna? I go think all that in. to be clear, I think they're yeah. also in trouble. Yeah. But oh yeah, they're, yeah, but they're but they're framing it around the next consoles. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's a little bit of both because when they first got revealed, I think it was super ambitious for what they were trying to do. Like yeah. y- you you do one thing in the story, and it will completely change the landscape. Like I yeah. remember the one example I think in E three twenty eighteen was like. You can choose whether or not to act, allow water to to go to a certain part of uh, the city, and mm-hmm. if you decide not to do that, like everything becomes more run down, and a certain faction will go against you. And it yes. just seems it seems so ambitious compared to what Dying Light One was. Yeah. like was, there's so many systems in yeah. place. I yeah. bet like you 
someone just like talked to an NPC or like mm-hmm. you know made it made a piece of toast and everything just fucking blew up. Yeah. That's kind of like this. The I mean, I'm it's kind of along the same route of like Watch Dogs Legion, where they're trying this yeah. brand new freaking mechanic that is probably so complicated on the back yeah. end of things. That uh, it's, it's it is crazy. Yeah, they probably but I, again, didn't put enough I hope time see the into light. into like baking it, basically making yeah. it. That With that, sense. Marcus O'Neill writes in and he says the following: Let's talk game delays. Why is it that game uh, that games get delays? Sorry, oh sorry, my bad. You know what? This is why you read. Why <laughs> is game delays have become so prevalent within the industry? No other entertainment media does this. When was the last time a movie or TV series got pushed back, uh, or pushed back their release date? It almost never happens. Cough, cough. No, yeah. Remember Solo? Remember that movie? Jeez. Avatar. Uh, Sonic. Avatar. Sonic. It, it happens, Marcus. It happens. I love you. Uh, <laughs> I'm all for games coming out when they're polished and ready, but I find it annoying that it has become uh, increasingly common for devs slash publishers to throw out a release date they either can't or have no idea whether or not they'll be able to hit, uh, and then get fans all excited and then pull the rug out from under them with a delay. Is it just a matter of needing better planning or... Or project management. So great question, Marcus. This is fantastic because I was literally writing the same thing in the show notes, and then I saw this question. I'm like, man, that's worded way better than me. somebody did. Somebody did the work for you. Yeah. That's that's the beauty of this show. That's why we always ask questions because when we get a question for every topic, it's just like, ah, oh, guys, somebody does the thinking for, for you. Exactly, it's the most beautiful thing. And Marcus always comes in with a save. So with that. Marcus, thank you for saving me here. Um, yeah, what's with the delays, guys? I, I, we've heard like a lot of people talking about like, it, is there a change that needs to be made? Why why can't a game just say we're coming out summer twenty twenty, Nathan? Why it can't is, a game just say that? It is, I think, one hundred percent financial. Mm-hmm. I think to um, to help secure funding from different investors and stuff. It's not just a studio that has the money and, right. and makes the game. Um, you need to say, well, hey, look at the buzz around this trailer we put out. Can we have some money? Because everybody's T-posing right now. Like, there's this game isn't a game yet. Mm-hmm. We yeah. just put out, we worked for a year on the demo yeah. so that we could get buzz behind it and get um, secure some funding. And, and so then even... Even going further with like AAA development, it's like, hey, look, uh, we're brought, we're right about to hit our financials, and we just have a release date for our biggest game. Yeah, huh? they want it to come prices? out within the financial year so people yeah. can get their bonuses and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, that's another end of the the game development deal where the 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 people actually typing on the keyboards, making you know all those videos where people are sculpting stuff in some program. Yeah. Um, those people aren't like getting benefits from this it's it's you know whatever i'm a commie whatever um (laughs) sorry we all feel the burn it it is it is um it's it's frustrating on that end but then you know you think about how movies and stuff don't do this kind of thing you hear about like you know movies that have been in development for forever um what the the second somebody gets hired to write a script for something you know about it Um, i mean let me just stop you there and just go Uncharted, yeah, movie. Uncharted, yeah, right, exactly. That <laughs> yeah. that movie's got delays. I'm not even talking about it in terms of 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 liking likening games to other stuff. Right. I just mean that, like, in the games industry, um, unfortunately, it's a lot of it is built around like hype culture, which is something yeah. I try to fight against because it's it's not. I don't think it's very good to to like be so fixated on. Oh, the new trailer is going to drop. Oh, the surprise of it and whatever. It's like, yeah. I feel like I'm going to make a fucking reaction trailer. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's a little bit, it would be a little bit more healthy if it were like the movie industry where it's just like, when you know a movie is in trouble when is when you're like, they filmed that like forever ago yeah. and yeah. there like still new isn't a trailer. Yeah. New mutants or like, I remember the Power Rangers movie. It was like, that movie's going to come out in like three months, and we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Turns out it was bad. Um, so Most amazing piece of garbage I've ever seen in uh, Right, my life. exactly. So it is it's it is a <laughs> miracle that the hype culture around games even exists at all yeah. because of how secretive everybody has to be. But I feel like 
everybody needs to take like a step back, a deep breath and like let go of that sort of stuff because that's when we get these um, delays is because these companies are like, well, we have to, we have to hit this date. We need to get everybody excited. And then it's like, oh, then we it's, can't do it. And then we let everybody down. Exactly. Kyle, but what are I'm your so, thoughts? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. How dare you? But y'all are going to buy it anyway. So yeah. like, it's disappointing, but like for all this news, like I'm still buying final fantasy seven. Doesn't yeah, matter yeah. to me that it's going to happen later than I wanted it mm -hmm. to. I'm still going to yeah. buy it and like it. And in a, yeah. in a year's time, I'm not going to remember that it was delayed. Yeah. Kyle, what say you, sir? What about all these delays? Who needs to pay the high crime? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think, like, if you're upset about a delay, like, it's kind of like a personal personal thing with you. Like, it's delays, and I know when you hate this quote coming up, Joe, but, like, a delayed game is great. Um, mm -hmm. it, it means that it's, it's getting the work that needs to be done. And so, like, unless that, it's cracked down, unless sure, there are, there are <laughs> Luke Boy, I, you suck. I you suck. I used to say that quote all the time, and then somebody was like, Yeah, it worked for crackdown yeah, three. And I was like, fair. Gosh, shit, actually, that, that is totally fair. <laughs> but when you, you see the other thing, like, the only two things that come to my mind of when a, a developer waits to give it the date and they're totally sure are yeah. Fallout 4 and 76, and they both didn't turn out that great. Um, yep. Yikes. So it's kind Good of like a double-edged yeah. sword when it comes to like waiting until you sh know the date is right. Because I I feel like, and I'm not a developer by any means, but I think mm -hmm. when you're making a game, there's always something towards the tail end that you could that you probably want to tweak. There's yeah. always something that you could probably do to make. I think it better. that's I think that's like any artist, right? Like yeah, you, for sure. Like you, you you ask any writer, you ask any you know painter, they're mm -hmm. like, I wish I would have done this, that, the other thing. So but like, so there is no. I, I to me I. Putting a date so far in advance isn't too bad or waiting until it's ready. Like, you do what you think is best uh, yeah. for your game and whatever it is, we're, like Nate said, we're going to buy it anyway. Like, I can't, I can't remember the dates of some of my favorite games. I can literally only remember Skyrim, and that's just yeah. because it had the same numbers in it. It was <laughs> yes. just 11, 11, 11. That's Other true. Than that, and uh, Uncharted 3, I think, had one, too. I think it was 11, 11, yeah. uh, 13. I was going to say was. 14, 14, 14, <laughs> my dumbass. <laughs> Jesus. On the 14th month. Kyle, listen, delays suck. Yes. We all hate them. It's something we got to live with. When it comes down to the brass tacks for me, yeah, th that Miyamoto quote is tiring, but it is it is somewhat true in the sense of, like, take your time, man. Like, we don't want jank. I don't want, you know, a Days Gone situation where they have to patch things out months in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I or even just Final Fantasy 15 of just being completely incomplete. So, for me, just take the time. I would like the approach where it is a Fallout, you know, for, hey, listen, it's out in six months, but... To me, it is a financial thing, like Nate said before, but it's also a situation of, like, PR and marketing. Like, th that shit just doesn't happen. That is months, if not, like, a year, almost a year out in, 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 in their window. So you have to let the PR teams know, at least probably, if I'm making an estimated guess, at least eight, eight to nine months before that game's even coming out. Or you have your own little marketing team in there, at least setting some type of outline. So there's a lot of moving pieces that goes into a delay. And unfortunately, what we stated earlier about Dying Light, you know, there's systems in place that we're unaware of where a simple talking to an NPC breaks the entire game. And I think one thing, uh, what it, one required reading or, or watching uh, is on IGN where they're, uh, they're doing this thing where they, they're showing speedrunners beat a game and they're having the devs there talking about it. Watch the one with uh, Outer Worlds because it yeah. talks about all the systems in place and how easily things could be broken. So the latter thing, yeah, yeah, the latter thing. Yeah. Jesus, that's fucking crazy. So <laughs> again, if you want to know about the latter thing, go check out <laughs> IGN. But hey, speaking of IGN, our last story talks about IGN. It's, so it's from or, IGN. It's from IGN. Fuck me, <laughs> Kyle. Go uh, for it. Matt Perslow from IGN. 
writes, Horizon Zero Dawn developer seeking staff with multiplayer experience. At current, Gorilla has yet to announce what its current project is, but the open world descriptor in this new senior game programmer job listing via Games Radar points towards a potential Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. The listing also notes that the game features ranged and melee weapons, combat, and traversal mechanics, which are all characteristics applicable to Horizon, or at least a game with similar traits. This all makes the plus point of experience in multiplayer interesting, as the original Horizon was purely single-player game. While it's impossible to draw concrete conclusions from this posting, it does point to Guerrilla at least considering a multiplayer component for its next open-world game. In short, if this is Horizon 2, that it, then it may feature multiplayer. All right. So I thought when I, when I first was going to ignore this story, I was just like, it's probably fucking, you know, it's nothing. Probably some type of weird co-op where you're, you're a fucking Strider or some shit. Uh, but then I was just like, we got Nate here. <laughs> Let's make a weird fucking multiplayer thing. Because uh-huh. we could be... Listen, the the safe bet is is Horizon, you know, Zero Dawn Part 2, whatever. Hey, it might have a co-op feature where you're tagging along with a buddy. But that, again safe bets let's take the gloves off let's get <laughs> fucking weird uh i'm gonna so, start with you nate yeah where are we going with this horizon 99 dawn yeah <laughs> 99 <laughs> robot t-rexes jump out of a bus in the sky no um like in the real like you know reacting to news part of this like yeah. i i really hope that it's not like a multiplayer thing that's tacked on to the game. I hope it's a separate thing because right. that worked for Naughty Dog, I think, where they're like, no, let's just make a good single player. Mm-hmm. Like if you think about a lot of stuff like in the in like the PS3 and early PS4 era, a lot of um, companies were pressured to put in multiplayer modes just so that people wouldn't trade the game in after playing a six yeah. hour campaign or whatever. I'm looking at you, Dead Space 2. You exactly. Be the exactly. Of scary games. And so- and so now yeah, that, you know, around 70-ish to 80-ish percent of games are bought digitally, like we were talking about before, you got their money. They bought the yeah. game. Um, so hopefully we can do that. But if we're going to be talking about like a hypothetical multiplayer, um, yeah. you know, you've got tribes and stuff in mm-hmm. Horizon. You can do like you can do an RTS uh, oh, style game. Me. There, you've got Stop all it right there. You got classes. my money. <laughs> you <laughs> you know? got my fucking money with an RTS. <laughs> you can do, and like I joked about it, but like a battle royale with like a, a heavy PVE like angle on it might be pretty right. cool too. Well, worth. Let's let's just start here, right, right, mm-hmm. right here, right now. Is this a multiplayer competitive experience? Like it's its own thing. Like you got a fucking team deathmatch, gunfight, whatever. Or is this a more cooperative experience? Kyle, what's your vote here? Oh, man. Uh, I, I I hope it's not competitive, like Team Deathmatch. That just sounds okay. weird for Horizon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would think it's probably kind of a uh, a co-op type of thing. Like we're Okay. Right. Nate, are you there with me here? It's a co-op experience? I'm, I, like, are we talking about what... Like what would be a cool idea, or what we think this really actually is going to be? Cool idea. Okay. Like okay. This is so, again unrealistic. <laughs> right. We got if you on go- here for a reason. If we're if we're <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> if we're going unrealistic with it, then then I would say I would love like a full, you know, actually. Uh, what was it? Janita Gavankar mm-hmm. um, yeah. was talking about how like. Oh, the sequel is going to be so great in that like leaked thing that she that she said or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's going to blow your fucking mind or something like that. Yeah, I would love if there was like a drop in, drop out co op where you had maybe not like a, um, I guess maybe sort of like a Red Dead Redemption two and like follow me here, where you yeah. have like your your camp uh, or like your people um, that are with you and at any moment you can. Uh, I didn't play so much of Horizon Zero mm-hmm. Dawn, so I don't remember what Janina's um, character is. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, she's uh, in the DLC. Yeah. she's in the she's DLC. In the DLC. She's okay, in the so like you know, maybe you can um, hop online with you know. I can just say, hey, Kyle, I'm I'm playing. Um, can you can you be my my buddy here on this? Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of, isn't there a lot of like. Are there freezing time mechanics? Not freezing time mechanics, but are there things where, yeah, if you're switching weapons, it like slows yeah, down. Yeah, slows down. So that's 
that's pretty incongruous with a multiplayer because what are you going to do? No. Like stop the, on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> stop yeah. their playing. Yeah. The um, only thing that I can think of, and Kyle, interrupt us whenever. Yeah. Because um, I have my own idea like, to come up with too. Okay, okay good. It's like a <laughs> Monster Hunter esque experience. Right. Where, like, yeah, like. That was the best part of the game. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah. <laughs> when you're fighting a huge fucking, you know, robot T Rex. Dope. Yeah. The huge fucking hawk. Scary as shit. And mm-hmm. having a buddy drop in and drop out and having having someone who is like the trapper class having someone who is the bow class having yeah, yeah, someone yeah. who's rocking with so the that kind of that's that kind of goes dope. along with what i what i came up with before we started Go for it, Kyle. um I, I know this is a bad comparison so hear me out there uh, All right. it, it kind of like evolve kind of like a 4v1 where you have four hunters take on a Thunderjaw or take on a Fireclaw, a Stormbird, a Stormbird Deathbringer, mm-hmm. like, and that one person is controlling the Thunderjaw and and using all its <laughs> move sets and its different weapons and. Okay. Uh, I, Listen, I think it's a pie would, in the sky. You're, again, like, like we're all wrong here. So keep my yeah, horizon, exactly. Keep my Horizon game single player, yeah. but if it right. does have something, you know, let me be those cool ass robot dinosaurs. <laughs> like, no, that would be fucking do. dope. Like, you could spawn Striders and they yeah. have to fight them and shit. Yeah. That's actually really dope. I'm not even telling you this is a bad idea. I'm telling it's, you, man. RTS. RTS. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> just cool think too. about it. Like, yeah, like, you're, you you get to make all these fucking crazy things and you send it out a fucking tribe. Like, that is dope. I'm all about... If you tell me RTS console game, I'm in. I'm just all in because there's just sadly not enough of them. Well, um, when you, you heard, um, I think... Is it is uh, Herman was the uh, the lead at Gorilla? Yep, yeah, Herman Holst, yeah. yeah. He was talking about when they were coming up with Horizon, and he was like, you know, at least when we start to come up with an IP, it's not what is this one game. We're thinking like you were saying, pie in the sky. We're thinking like, you know, what are the action figures going to be like? What would the TV show be like? What is yeah. so, especially with Gorilla, you're 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 thinking like, well, shit, like other than the 99 T-Rex is jumping from a bus in the sky. Um, Anything's possible. And anything really is possible. And now yeah. Herman's fucking driving the ship now. So like, yeah. he can just be like, no, they are jumping from a bus. <laughs> I'm just imagining the bus is 99 just T-Rexes jumping at, from the sky. Yeah. And then when they hit they're the ground, arms. just breaking exactly. apart because they're all just metal. They just can't. <laughs> just shattering. <laughs> I'm just picturing what, the, a Rex from Toy Story yeah. jumping out. Yeah. I'm not even thinking Horizon. And then like he's freaking out. He's like, oh, God, I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the true ending of Toy Story 4. With that, uh, I'll end on this. I think it's probably some type of, realistically, it's some type of... Uh, um, co-op experience to show you the power of of the playstation 5 because if you think about it it's rendering so much environment if you guys just drift off Mm -hmm. and like you know eventually in all co-op games you know you or your partner hits a fucking invisible wall and you can't go any further i'm i'm thinking they're showing you the power of the playstation 5 by going no you could you could be on one side of the map your friends on the other it's nuts was yeah. it Hori- was it Horizon where they were they were showing that video of like wherever Aloy is looking like it showed like that cone yep. of what was rendering? Yeah. Um. So you know that would be. I hope it's not gimmicky. I hope it's not sort of like look what we can do now yeah. and this is the reason we're doing it is just because we can do it. I hope that it's like yeah. an inspired choice, whatever they do. And that's the only thing that scares me because like Killzone Three gorilla and you had like everything like the light fucking bleeped at you you had the mic just for every other thing like that's not what i want or the touchpad for like certain like change your gun settings so like yeah i i want it to be non-gimmicky if you're gonna do it but make it cool and Mm -hmm. with that gang guys everybody what a wrong time to ask you if you're hanging on to something because the acid reflux just kicked in but with that nate Mm -hmm. kyle are you holding on to something? Always. Good. Yes. Prepare the drop. Each and every <laughs> week, PlayStation drops the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation on the PlayStation storefront. The only problem is that there are way too many awesome games to name. So each, each host picks a game of their choosing to highlight and shout out. This week sucks pretty bad. <laughs> Kyle. What's your pick? Uh, so out of the, the, the bad lineup, I picked yeah. the, the game called Earth Knight simply because I played a demo of it at PAX. 
Um, yeah. A couple years ago. I believe it was PAX or PSX. It's one of those two. Um, oh, Earth- right. You were talking early days of, of the trophy room. You were talking yeah. about this game. I remember uh, that, yeah. Earth Knight is an illustrated, procedurally generated platformer that takes place in a dystopian future just after the dragon apocalypse. Sydney and Stanley have had enough. They've decided to skydive back down to the planet, taking out as many dragons as they can. Jump and dash your way across the backs of dragons on your way down to Earth in classic 2D side-scrolling action. You're pretty much, like, yeah, you're, it, it's kind of like the start of Fortnite. You jump out of a plane, a bus, or whatever, in space, and you, you maneuver to land on the back of dragons. Um, mm-hmm. And then you're making your way across the, the flowing back of the dragon in space, trying to knock down all these enemies and stuff. Yeah. And when you get to the end, you take out the dragon, you top off that one, and you land on another one, try to get your way down. Oh, to that the actually sounds pretty dragons. fucking cool. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it, it was pretty fun when I played it a couple years ago, so I'm excited it's finally coming out. That's that's yeah no that actually sounds pretty badass. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a horrible week. Nate, what was your pick, good sir? So you while we were getting ready, you're like, oh yeah. yeah. So we do this thing where we go through the drop and choose one. And I was like scrolling through. I was like, oh man, there's a couple stinkers here. Uh, Kingdom Hearts uh-huh. included. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, talk <laughs> shit I, about I, it. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, JB. Um, Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I was I was as most you know, people with our, our kind of like leanings into what we like to play. I see a soccer guy and I scroll past it, but then I was like, what is this soccer tactics and glory? Mm -hmm. It's an original combination of turn-based strategy and RPG, create a football team, play matches, earn XP, train skills, learn new classes, upgrade facilities, buy and sell footballers. I, okay. Grow, grow youth is a weird (laughs) thing to say. What um, is that? <laughs> make hard choices. It's a deep strategy which respects your time. And like that is you know, taken for straight audio, from the audio blog, list. by the way. That was not yeah, exactly. that up. That was taken from the blog. Exactly. Um, and if, if you're an audio like listener for this, like, oh my yeah. god, you gotta look up what the, the jerk that's on the cover of this game looks like. <laughs> he looks like, like a knockoff he, he, Dennis Quaid. Does he not? No, yeah, he exactly. Definitely... Oh my god, he looks like a wider Dennis Quaid. Yeah. He looks like a guy that voted for Brexit. That's what I'm looking at. Right here. Yeah, no, th- his his name is Johnny Brexit, and <laughs> yeah. he's a fucking billionaire. Um, and he hates but, his son because he's into art. Yeah. So I like, yeah. <laughs> but he still paid for the fancy art school. Exactly. So I like, I looked up. This is on Switch also, and and that's and oh, I, I I looked up like uh, screenshots of it, and like I encourage you guys to do it while I'm talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um. This game kind of looks great. Really? <laughs> from a certain from a certain standpoint, I don't know from a how a certain it, point of view. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know how like it's at least a novel concept of like, ooh, a sports like RTS. That's Whoa. interesting. Like it looks Fuck, it looks you get me at tactics, you know. It, you it, get me it at looks RTS. it looks shit, but uh yeah. there's like it's interesting to look at and it's like mechanically it's one of the more interesting ones on this list for me. I want to know why this cover that I'm seeing right now is not the cover for the actual game, and we got Dennis Quaid back off. Yeah, because this actually doesn't look half bad. You're right. With that, yeah. let's let's get to my pick. Let's see. Yeah, we got Foxyland. We got Kingdom Hearts Remind, Lumini, uh, Shadow Legend VR. Um, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it's VR, guys. You know, let's listen. Shadow Legend VR is an action-adventure game exclusively designed for virtual reality, where you play as a Grand Master of the Knights Templar in a story-driven medieval crusade, freely explore densely filled worlds, and use your sword, bow, and magic skills to save your kingdom from the destruction of Lord Adroth. Okay. Lord Adrock from the Beastie Boys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Listen, man, it's it's a VR game. The I medieval crusade, and all of a sudden there's fan like why can't you say medieval fantasy? I don't know because I'm like crusade, and they're like freely explored, densely filled worlds. I'm like of like pillage because like that's what the crusades were. It's like pretty shitty, but okay. Um, yeah, all right, cool. Shadow <laughs> Legend VR, man, fuck this list. But each and every week, you can send your questions in. Via PS Trophy Room on Twitter, which you guys and gang did. Awesome. Or the Discord, the Casa de Bad Bit Discord. You send your questions in, we read them on the show, 
or you send your mail, write it down, or type it out, whatever. It's, you know, 2020. And then you just send the mail over to Andrew House's house. And then I go each and every week, fly on over, swim on over, fuck it, even drive. Who knows? How'd you get the mail this week, though? Did you uh, dig a a hole, a tunnel, and pop up to the kitchen again? Well, oddly enough. Like, what was it? Well, so, oddly enough, um, I kind of just, I hitchhiked my way uh, through maybe possibly illegal channels. (laughs) On a United flight, I was in the carry-on. I just dipped on out. I just rolled out. I just pulled the emergency lever and I just hopped out of that plane and then right into his chimney, right into his chimney this time. I dove, but I barrel rolled. And again, as I say, each and every week, you could jump from any height. As long as you do a barrel roll, you'll stick the landing. You won't get injured. And I went in there, tiptoed my way. He has this like home security thing. Not even a problem. I don't believe in technology. So I just walk on past it. I see his mail. I'm like, oh, this is nice. I'm going to take this mail. And then... I smell something. It smells delicious. It's the oven. The oven set to 425. So I ate, I ate, the, I ate the oven. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. The smell came from the oven. And I opened it up, and it was the most decadent fucking ham you've ever seen in your life. And so I just took the ham, and I had it on my way back. I thought it was delicious. Oh. So Andrew House, there you go. That was so your house and house is ham now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm eating the house's ham. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> the first question. What a rich part. tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this wasn't the best Andrew has a snail mail. I'm running on empty. Let's be real. Uh, the famous, the most famous Seamus I've ever met in my entire life writes in, one night, you see and hear strange noises and lights coming from your backyard shed. You investigate the shed and you found a prototype PlayStation 5. What do you do with it? Return it to Sony, sell it online, try it yourself, take as many photos as you can and post them online. All right. You got to pick one in your reasoning, whatever it may be. Kyle, yeah. what do you do? Well, do you return it to Sony? Before, before I said what I, I did, as, as Seamus is writing this question. Yeah. I immediately thought of Stranger Things, and the PS5 prototype is like a demo gor- gorgon in the shed <laughs> making all these noises. It's like, the demo I'm, unit gorgon. Exa- so first of all, I'm going to call Hopper, and he's going to come and yeah. take it out for me. Um, I I would take photos and sell it to publications. That's what I would do. I'd try to make some money off of that thing. Uh, yeah, because you know what? Here's the thing. Selling it online never works out. No. eBay's a thing. So, you know, Sony then, would sue me if I sell. Yeah, and Sony. then like, yeah, Sony's gonna look at it. They're like, "That's fucking ours, you dummy." I could just sell it to someone, and I get a good easy five hundred bucks probably uh-huh. for it. Good, a good shiner, depending on the publication. I get to make my own rules here, and yeah, and then I buy the console when it comes out because there's no games to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nate, what what's the you say? I feel like I would be more surprised that I had a backyard <laughs> to, find, to, to find out I had a backyard. It's like, oh, word, this apartment has a backyard and a shed, and I ain't been using this. But no, um, in this hypothetical scenario where I'm a homeowner and I yeah. have a backyard and a shed with which inside of which is a PlayStation, the fifth one. And a one, mortgage. And yeah. Um, I don't know enough about the dark web to sell it uh, safely, I guess. But yeah. so... I would probably. Well, you know where it? you could sell it. You know where you could sell it on the dark web. Five uh, chan. No, no, right? no, no, eight chan. Sorry, no, eight no chan. chance. No chance. Mark's Luke. gonna handle it. He's gonna no handle chance. all the bad stuff. Dude. <laughs> no. He's gonna handle yeah. all no the bad stuff. No more shout outs to Mark. No more shout outs. <laughs> all right. Well. Yeah, I'll sell it to THQ Nordic on fucking five <laughs> nine, on sixty nine chan. Uh, so I would definitely probably keep it and yeah. just be like, now I ain't gotta buy this. Um, it's got the it's got the cool V vents and it'll stay cool forever. Um, and then, you know, after Sony doesn't give a shit, like after a couple years, then I can sell the Ooh. the dev kit to somebody because like yeah. Sony's going to be working on the fucking PlayStation six at that point. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Uh, Nathan, uh, <laughs> Nathan McErnie writes in uh, this one's just for me, fellas. Uh, new segment. Ghost, uh, sorry, Goat Simulator Platinum Trophy Watch. Um, please update the status on the Platinum Trophy. Uh, Nate, that's not happening. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going back. <laughs> uh, 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 Nate on the show. Yes. 
uh, other Nate is referring to. <laughs> Patron Nate is. Uh, I can put it together. To. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm on. I got one trophy left on on it, and it's a uh, flappy goat. And fuck that achievement. Joe, fuck you that game. one left, man. Don't give up. It's too hard. Unless anybody is good at the goddamn Flappy Bird game, I will literally it, give you my PSM profile. I it, will in Road Simulator, does it have Still that option where I, like, I can hop on and help you with a section of the game? Because I will totally... Controller pass yeah. or whatever the hell? Let's try it out. I'm just saying, man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus comes at us once again. He goes, uh, uh, one on a more fun note, I propose you play a little game. Uh, I want uh, each of you to pick or draft two to three upcoming games you won't think that will hit their release date or window. One point for each correct delay. I'll let you guys determine the stakes oh, no. and we can revisit at the end of the year and see who won. <sighs> wow. Okay. All right. Let's just, you know what? Let's just, uh, for the sake of time, limit it to one. Okay. I say Gears of War Tactics gets delayed. Oh, I was. It's not coming out this I year. I was thinking strictly PlayStation. Oh, well, I'm just thinking games that I want and then RTSs, and that just sings <laughs> to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think that game's coming out. Nate, what do you think, sir? I'm worried that Animal Crossing is going to get a delay, um, but if we're going to stick with PlayStation, uh, I don't remember which one of you said it, but I do think that Cyberpunk will get another delay. Like, I think it'll yeah. be like, I think it'll be Q1 next year when it actually comes out. Mm-hmm. Bold. I. Good possibility. I don't know. I'm going. Yeah, who, who knows? Who fucking knows? Yeah. I'm going to say, since it doesn't have a specific date, we just know it's going to be mm-hmm. around the launch of the PS5. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say God's Fall. It's not or in the launch Ooh. of the year. I think that gets pushed. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see who's right at the end of the year. And please, Marcus, keep us honest. On <laughs> uh, the final question, and he's been bickering on me, uh, at me on this. So let's do it. <laughs> the insipid ghost writes in referring to the Death Stranding's poor sales. He asks, does this impact Sony's pursuit of exclusive con- uh, content from Kojima going into the next gen? His name is huge and awards were impressive. Are sales going to matter for Sony given the exposure he brings them? Now, if you guys don't know Benji sales on Twitter, you ought to be following him because he's fantastic. But he also uh, put out this huge thing on Death Stranding of how it sold well the first week, but after that, it has fallen off the proverbial cliff. It didn't reach the top 10 in December and then, or sorry, it didn't reach the top 10 in November and then in December, it didn't even make the top 20. If I'm, mm-hmm. mis- uh, if I'm mistaken, let me know. But it didn't sell all too well. Do you think that this impacts the way Sony looks at, or even let's go even broader, uh, other studios look at the the possibility of partnering with Kojima? I'm going to go with you, Kyle. I don't think so. I think Kojima yeah. has such a good and long history behind him uh, as far as when it comes to uniqueness and for, sure. for creating these grand events style games I, I think that still will work for him and i still think that would be a an asset for playstation going forward uh okay. i mean okay. we've all said it before death Stranding came out death Stranding was a weird game the trailers are yeah. weird we had no idea what it was going it's into weird. it um after beating it still yeah, fucking weird same yeah. uh and it and we both totally get i don't know nate did you play death Stranding? Didn't want to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know. I looked up. I looked up all the the cutscenes and watched yeah. it, and uh, yeah. I watched enough stuff. But I was just sure. like, I my my personal life is too short to yeah. devote to something <laughs> that I don't want to play. Right. Yeah. So, and yeah. and yeah. that's that's the thing. Death Stranding is not everyone's type of a cup of tea no. when it comes to games. Yeah. Like there is no real action in it for a majority yeah. of it. So like yeah. I can totally get why it's not like 98% of it. Absolutely. And the action that's there kind of sucks and yeah. you don't want to do it anyway. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Cuz the game isn't built for the stuff that actually yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 you're right. Uh so yeah, I to me I do think it, it it impacts him. Poor sales at the end of the day that's what companies care about. I could win all the awards in, in the world. It, it doesn't matter. Like when you take a look at Disney, like they're not Put, you know, Avengers isn't uh, isn't gonna win the Oscar for Best Picture. You know what I mean? So, but do they care about that? Hell no. Nah. Like, do you do we think that like Disney actually gives 
too much of a shit that like Rise of Skywalker got a 55 on Rotten Tomatoes. No, they care about if it hits a billion. Like and that's it did. what they care. <laughs> and it did. You know, whether you love it, hate it, whatever, every every time you watch it you cry at the end like me, fine. But it just doesn't matter. So for me, I think this does impact the way companies look at Kojima. Um and I think this is it maybe <sighs> He definitely needs an editor, and I think that this game screams that. As much as I enjoy it, and I enjoy the gameplay loop, man, that story needed some edits. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's all I, I'm going to say on that. I, I, my like, prediction mm-hmm. is that I don't think that Kojima is going to put out another like Sony-exclusive game in the same way that it just they just did with this yeah. one. And if they do, you're probably going to see a lot less big name famous actors and likenesses of big name people because that stuff costs a lot of money yeah um getting mads in there is a lot of money um and so i think the next thing we see from kojima is going to be a little bit more action heavy and if it's an exclusive you're going to see you're going to start to see those compromises i think because i think he needs it to be honest exact, that and like the people that are in charge of playstation right now are not the same people that were in charge of playstation when he was brought on and it was just like oh come here just make whatever you want oh i'm <laughs> we're so sorry about yeah. konami oh my god just come and make something for us <laughs> yeah and then it turns out it was just like a, a papa john simulator and then like <laughs> <laughs> that's super reductive but then yeah. it turns out it was something totally different than even even people that were super hyped for it was uh, thinking yeah. it was going to be. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm glad that the game exists. I'm glad that that like sort of unbridled um, creativity exists. But yeah. yeah, with with the sales being what they what they are referring to Insipid Ghost's question, um, you might start to see some more compromises happen down the line of like, well, what if you make like a tactical espionage action game, Kojima? <laughs> or yeah. like maybe maybe we don't have Robert Downey Jr. in this game <laughs> like yeah. you wanted to or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. So No, I, I definitely agree with you there. there. Again, as much as I love the game, it definitely it definitely needed those compromises. And I think if they do partner, if he partners with anyone else, I think they're going to need a clear, clear, you know, what is this game? Because I think Death Stranding's biggest problem, and I was talking with Insipid before this show started, was... The problem with Death Stranding is it doesn't look fun, right? Like, when you look at it, you're like, I don't want to play that. But, like, when I got my hands on it, I didn't really care about the story. I actually cared about the gameplay, and I, I loved the gameplay loop. And how, like, again, how for how dystopian, how positive that, that gameplay experience was for me. Um, so, like, I love Death Stranding for its faults, but at the same exact time, yeah, I if, if, I'm, if I'm a company, I, I give a shit. Like I, I yes. just, I <laughs> if give it's a your shit. money, <laughs> and I'm sorry, and I and I walked myself back there, um, on purpose because I had a brain fart, but like you know, y- it didn't look fun. You when you're streaming it, it's not a streamable game, and I think that's no. what what matters now is is it mm-hmm. is it fun? Does it mm-hmm. look at at least fun? Because you know, people saw Apex Legends, it looked fucking fun, and it was the most downloaded game that month, and it rivaled, you know, Fortnite for a few weeks, and so that's what I think is the most important thing, um, is does it look fun, and it, honest God, as much as I love it, it looked fun, mm-hmm. so there well, you go. You, you, saw, you saw Kojima talk about, like, oh, I want to do, like, movies and stuff, and it's like, yeah. good, get that part of yourself out, out in a way that doesn't, like, interrupt me from playing a game. Like, if I'm holding a controller, I don't want to do anything else other than play a game, mm-hmm, right? right? So it's just like, get that out of your system, and I'll, I'll see you on your next game where, where it's yeah. a little bit more Absolutely. gameplay heavy. Yeah, yeah. With that, guys, gangs, ladies, gentlemen, all that jazz, uh, thank you so much, Nate, for joining us. Yeah. It's fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Uh, and that's been the Trophy Room. But before we head on out, Nate, I'll let you be the first one here. You have anything you want to pimp out? Yeah. So um, if you'd like, you can get all my bad takes on video <laughs> games at at two at a giant on Twitter. Um, I also have my show, the new entertainment system podcast of uh, an improvised comedy games podcast about games that don't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's at the NES pod on Twitter. Um, or you can also just, it's, it's in it's in my my pinned tweet on my thing. So if you go to at two headed giant spelled out, not the numbers, on Twitter, um, 
go check it out and uh, let me know what you think. Yeah. And Kyle, what would you like to pimp out? As always, I'd like to pimp out myself, who that ninja 73 on Twitter and on PSN. Uh, my show all about the kind of funny community called best friends. Talk funny is on Twitter at BFS talk funny, wherever you listen to podcast services. Nate's going to be coming on in a, a couple yeah. weeks, which I'm super excited. Oh, shit, about. Really? Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, fucking I have a lot, a great lineup of guests coming up soon. Yeah. Um, so look forward to that. Um, if you're in the New York area, hit up at kind of NYC or on Twitter or on at kind of NYC.com, um, see all upcoming events. We're going to go see Sonic together, which is the only way I want to see that movie is with, <laughs> with other Are members. you guys going to be all wasted or what? Uh, well, uh, in, in New York, they have, um, Sony's actually having like a, an experienced PlayStation thing. At like their oh Sony headquarters, God. so we're gonna go there and see what that's all about, oh, okay. and then go see Sonic. I thought you were like they're hosting the event. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and then afterwards, <laughs> we will we'll discuss it and get drunk and, and have a great time. Um, so that's coming up February fifteenth. So yeah. God, God, why did you? Why? If there's any movie you needed to delay or stop, God, <laughs> this was the one. <laughs> they already did. Said. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Remember that abomination? He had human fucking teeth. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> you can watch this show on YouTube.com slash games where I don't just talk about PlayStation, talk about all things games. You can watch this show or listen to this show on your podcast of choice. Please, please, please rate us five stars on iTunes. It really does help us out. And or support the show on Patreon.com slash BadBit. Again, we have all those new tiers. We have a new Road to Greatness coming. We have top tier oh a video game ranking show where uh, let's just be honest i'll cut to the chase it's all bullshit but it's a ton of fun so with all that said and with all that out of the way everybody keep hunting and keep playing playstation